Hey guys, Mike here from TA Outdoors. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. I am here in my shed, but I'm about to do an overnight camp in a bushcraft shelter made of natural materials. As well as that, I'm gonna butcher up a deer, learn different ways of cooking it, do primitive fire lighting, other fire lighting methods. It's gonna be an awesome video. But before we get into the episode, I'd just like to give a big thanks to Squarespace who are sponsoring this video. As most of you following me from the past few weeks will know, I've been building my website from scratch with absolutely no knowledge of website coding or web development or anything like that. Thankfully, Squarespace has been really user friendly. It's super easy to use. There's no plugins, no updates or anything like that. The 24 seven support, 365 days a year has been really useful. They've been very good at responding back to me. Often the problem is sorted within the first few minutes. My website will probably be going live in about two weeks time guys, so not long now. I'm now using the Squarespace commerce section to build up the online shop so that I can get you guys patches and stickers and other TA merchandise. If you guys are interested in actually setting your own website up and like me, you don't have much knowledge of website coding, Squarespace are offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Just go to www.squarespace.com forward slash TA outdoors. There's a link to that in the description below. So without further ado guys, let's get out into the woods and do some bushcraft. Well guys, welcome to another episode of TA Outdoors. I am here at this incredible camp with two awesome lean-to shelters, a fire pit. I'm here with Dustin James from uh, Bushcraft Tools and also West Country Bushcraft, uh, where he does bushcraft courses catch and cooks, everything like that, it's incredible. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick tour of this camp because I know you love the camps and this is something else. Right, welcome to our camp. We've got two examples of two different types of lean-to. So these have all been built just from materials that have been cut down here in the woodland or have fallen down onto the ground. There's nothing really that's been cut down deliberately for these, um, you know, specifically for these shelters. A lot of it is just waste, it's like they're debris shelters and I think it really, it really means a lot to use debris, to use waste things rather than go and cut trees down just for a shelter. If you can find the wood on the ground that's already been cut and it's dead and it's strong and it's not rotten, that's exactly what you want. So this is our bed. Well, this is normally where I sleep when I'm here. I'm doing courses down here in Somerset. I've got all these hides. So all these hides I've tanned. They're all left over from, from deer butchery on courses and so on. Here's a lovely fallow. These are... The, to tan these hides, to take them from their waste um, product, their waste material, to a useful, uh, useful resource, is something that I'm really passionate about. There's a fallow hide, and I, mean, I don't need a roll mat. I just need all of these hides. Okay, there might be, it might be a bit overkill. I might have a few too many, but it's it, it gives it lovely comfort. There's not only fallow, there's roe as well, and I've got a few. I've got some of these which are lovely, lovely thick, really warm um, sheepskins. Great for, great for lying on. So that just goes down there. Sleeping bag over the top, nice fire. The heat reflects. You're in your bed, you doze off to sleep to the crackling of the fire and you wake up to the, to the, to the sounds of the birds. Right, so we've got all these hides. What else can we do with the hide? Well, this is where I've made a cave man bag. <laughs> there we are, we've got deer antler buttons. They pop through there. And it's just it's just a caveman a caveman bag. You can put all your little bits and pieces in it. It's all been this has all been made from one hide. This this shoulder strap has been woven together. It's actually been plaited from long strips coming cut off the outer of one hide, using the inner hide to fold up, stitch in the middle, and then to create this bag. So it's all made from one hide. We've got a few examples here of uh, of different fire lighting kits. So we've got some hand drills. We we, we've got some fire plow um, materials. We've even got some bamboo saw materials. So I keep my bows and some more, some more fireboards and, and different things. It's all just fire lighting things. And then you've got like an extended lean-to here, isn't an it? An extended lean-to. Yeah. So you can see it's not quite a lean-to. It's a box, a box lean-to. Yeah. I'm yet to, you know, it needs a few improvements. They always do. You always need to come back here every few weeks and just add a load of debris. Yeah. Because a lot of time the wind will blow it off. It'll sure. fall off. So just, just to make it thicker. Box lean to, a few improvements. Yep, I want to put a few shelves in there, maybe a shelf there, maybe even extend this to make it to make it wider. There's always camp improvements. We've got a lovely cooking setup here. A chain, yep, a chain. It's, it might not be very bushcrafty, but I'll tell you what, it's really, it's really handy, it's really practical. And these hooks as well, they're really handy. Things like hanging meat off. So hopefully when we do some deer butchery, we're gonna try and use these hooks in this chain. We're gonna smoke some meat, uh, cook some food up. We've got a Dutch oven. Cook some food up in that.
Right, so these ribs, what we want to do is we want to slow cook these ribs. We don't want to cook them too quick. So what I'm going to do here is move this fire away. We don't want direct heat, we want indirect heat to get these slowly cooking over the next two, three, maybe even four hours. So by the time it comes to eating these, they'll have been slow cooked and the meat will hopefully just fall apart. As you can see, we've got a nice little rub made up of chili flake, mixed herb, spicy paprika, salt and pepper. Just a dry, a dry rub, that's all we need to give it some, some extra flavour. Right, so these are the pencil fillets. I've just oiled them. I've chucked them on this, this skillet. And now I'm just going to quickly turn them. We don't want to cook these for too long because they're a lovely, delicate cut. So we're going to give them maybe about another minute, minute and a half. We're going to take them off, leave them rest for a minute or two. Well, Mike, this is the, these are the pencil fillets we took out. These were the first two real proper cuts of meat that we took off that deer that was hanging up in the tree moments ago. Oh, I can smell it, it's looking good. So these are the pencil fillets. Yep. We just quickly flash fried them, maybe a minute and a half each side and um, finish them with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper and there we go. They look incredible. Can I tuck in? Man? Welcome to my camp. Be my guest. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. That is, in if cameras did, did taste, guys, that is incredible. Very minimal seasoning, really, as Very, well, isn't yeah. it? The idea is just to really taste, to, 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 get, to bring out the full flavour from, from the meat rather nice. than to cover it in different mixes of herbs and, yeah. and seasoning and rubs and so on. It's very basic, salt and pepper, lovely, bit of olive oil. Man. Absolutely lovely. Oh. oh, that was good. What is this? Mm. <laughs> now my friend, that's for you. This here is elderflower champagne. Oh wow, made by your good self. Of course. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. Man, that's amazing. That is amazing. Refreshing. Yeah, goes so well with that. That is incredible. I love this stuff. That and is it's so, so easy good. to make. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. This salt we're using, this is Cornish sea salt. You can see it's a very coarse salt and um, it just brings out such a great flavor with the meat. It really was, honestly, it was amazing. That is, that is incredible. Look at that. So this was the pencil, uh, cut wasn't it the pencil cut at the that's back that's right the pencil fillet that is oh man man it, it's making me envious just you doing that and look at this guys the setup cooking away still the ribs just awesome and some uh, elderflower champagne to go with it so i'm just carefully following the perforated line. Perforated line being this very thin layer of membrane separating each muscle within this haunch. This haunch is made up of several cuts, several muscles. To separate them, I'm just carefully following the seam to reveal 
the meat in its natural membrane packaging. As you can see, it just it just falls into place as soon as you touch it with the end of a sharp knife. I'll just spin that around for you. Here we are. Just finish off that last bit of membrane. Here we are. You can see how thin that 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 muscle is attached to there. And then we come in with a knife, and we just carefully separate it, ending up with, we've almost finished taking this off, so just finish this. What we're going to end up with is the shank. There we are. Put that there. Now we want to get into this. So now this shank, let's get rid of this. Cut through there. Here we are, something for the dog. Put that over there for her later. Now, this is a shank. We don't really want to treat this as a steak. We don't want to pan fry it. We don't want to fast cook it. Shank wise, cooking wise, what we want to do is slow cook this shank. Yes, it does still have a bit of the membrane on, on the outside. We can take that off or this will pretty much dissolve and uh, break up into nothing once it's slow cooked. We're not going to cook this today. We're actually going to take this home and put it in the fridge or freezer for another day. But what I don't want to do is put this in the fridge still with its socks on. Put that down there. There we are. There's our shank perfect for slow cooking in the Dutch oven. Well, so I mentioned you want to cut across the grain and you can see the structure of this, these lines, they're all going this way, which means we want to be cutting in across the grain. Because we're going to be curing the meat, smoking the meat, we really want to make it as thin as possible. Time wise, we could be looking at anywhere from five hours or more to get this properly cured. So these bits we're just gonna take off. They're quite small because we started at this end and they're just gonna hang over on a piece of wood in our smoker like that until they shrivel up and they go nice and firm so they're just like cured meat. So once we've cut all these, down, these cuts down into nice thin strips ready to be put on the smoker before we do that, we're going to give them a little marinade. What you'd normally do is give them anything from an overnight to a 24 marinade. So they really absorb all those juices and flavours that will then be, um, you know, th 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 those flavours that will then come out once you start chewing them. So we've got some nice thin strips of meat we've just cut off. We've made a nice marinade made up of different, of lots of different things. I won't go through them because I've been here all day. So now, there's only one more thing to do. We need to build a smoker. Up for it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Right, so as you can see, we're starting to get some good colour here. And um, just by feeling it, we are on the way to being, to being cooked. So what we're now going to do is we're just going to flip it, unhook one end, flip it over, find somewhere you can secure this hook to, thread the hook through, and we're going to leave that for another little hour or so. So it's been on there for about an hour and a half. We'll probably give it maybe an hour and a half, maybe another two, maybe two and a half hours. Who knows? Who knows? It depends on how many beers we have. That's it. <laughs> Pretty easy to identify hazel sap things, they usually always straight. <laughs> Great material. Right, so this is for our kebab. Let's take them down to about a metre. There's our kebab, and look, there's the beginning of our two branches for our smoker. making kebab sticks guys now with uh, 
with some ha hazel saplings. And it's, we're about six o'clock PM now. What time did we start? Two? Yeah, we started at two. We're a little bit behind. Yeah. We might have had a little bit too much planned for the day. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. We've had, um, we, we, we've already done a video, um, which is coming up next week, by the way, is how we, pro how we uh, butchered the deer. Yep. So there's because of YouTube's fun demonetization policies, uh, the deer butchery part is going to be a whole separate video. So whilst we've got loads of different parts of the deer and different cuts that we're going to cook now that Dustin's showing you, we have actually done a whole, or, or I've helped film a whole episode on how to butcher a deer. And, and Dustin's taught me how to do it because I've never done it before. So stick around on this channel. Be sure to check in probably next week. Uh, and I don't mind if that video then gets demonetized because you know it's just a it's just a kind of tutorial, but it's um, it's a bit of fun, and I certainly learnt a lot. You guys will definitely enjoy it. It will be up on the channel next week, so be sure to check, you know, check back on the channel, and uh, the video should be up hopefully then. Hopefully it doesn't get demonetized. I don't know yet. It might do, but we'll, we'll you know we'll go for it anyway. Who cares? How are we looking? Are you done on yours? I need to yeah, come a bit higher on I've my done. one. I've just sterilised it over the heat. Yeah. Now we just need um just need our meat. Oh yeah. And we're gonna build our kebabs. What do you think? Is that, that about right? So we stripped off the sort of perfect. First, that's about right. First sort of third. Yep. A little point on the end. Yep. I was just saying we we're just speaking to Dustin about uh, different woodlands and how we found deciduous woodlands certainly to have a lot more resources. Deciduous being like a broadleaf woodland, they definitely have a lot more resources, don't they? They certainly do. I think it's very important to, if, if anyone is ever looking to buy some woodland or, or to, yeah. to make a camp in, in a woodland, yeah. I think it's quite important to really make sure there's lots of different varieties, there's different species of trees, yeah. which will offer you anything from cordage to shelter to food. It's all it's, about resources at the end of the day. It's all about resources. Exactly. It? It's all about the wild resources. So we've stripped the bark off. And this is hazel, so we're just gonna just gonna make sure everything is fairly sterile. Yes, we are in a woodland environment. There are germs everywhere, but the more we do to reduce the amount of germs, the better and easier it will be for us to cook our food. So you might be wondering, what is he doing? Well, this is a piece of elder. What I've done by using a piece of stiff wire, I've hollowed out the elder. Remember, elder's got that natural pith that goes all the way through it. It's pretty hard to hollow it out unless you have a strong, hard wire. You can burn the wire, get it red hot and burn through, or you just keep pushing it in and scraping it, tapping it out, and eventually you end up with a nice hollow blowpipe for the fire. To finish it off, what I've done here is I've just made some cordage out of nettle. I've made a little hole in it and here we are. It's just, it allows you to then hang it up next to the fire when you're done for another time. Is that our ribs? They're looking good. Maybe about another hour. Smelling good though, aren't they? Oh man, just, <laughs> just incredible. They do smell so good. So we're now gonna make these kebabs. We've got our, we've cut some lovely chunks of, um, of the rear haunch. So this is the, 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 one of the legs. We've taken one of the cuts. We've then cut them down into these lovely cubes. Quite, quite hunky, chunky cubes. Once again, a nice dry rub. Before we thread it onto our stick, I'm gonna take some onion. And we're gonna start off with one onion. And I find the trick to skewering onion on a stick, if you just skewer it straight through, it will split. You kind of need to drill through it. Once you've drilled through it, you can then thread it on. Otherwise it will split and fall off. So what we're we doing, let's do onion. Let's thread on a nice chunk of this. 
of this haunch with this half an hour rub, little little marinade. And let's go for, let's get one of these mini red peppers. Let's thread that on once again, drill through it. So now we've got that on, now let's get another onion. I'm gonna thread the onion on. And we just keep going like this until it's completely built up. And we've got a nice kebab that we're ready to roast over the fire. There we are, let's put another mini pepper on. Mar let's marry that up with another bit of onion. And then let's put another another yeah, piece of meat on. For luck. One for luck. So I'm just gonna thread this down a little bit more, get it a little bit more compact. And I'm gonna probably thread on another pepper. Let's go for a little yellow one. Another pepper. And there we go. So I'm gonna stick that in there for now. Once, when we're roasting it, when it's over the fire, we're gonna have this half a lemon over the top. As it cooks, we're gonna go over to it, we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna give it a squeeze. That's very clever, that. I like that idea. And it's gonna, once again, give us a lovely taste, nice, uh, nice marinade. That's one done, let's do the other one. All right, guys, we're making a cooking tripod, well, not a cooking tripod, smoking tripod, really, isn't it? Making a smoking tripod, yep. You've got some honeysuckle there. Honeysuckle, we've just sort of wound it up into a little, uh, a little bundle like this. Now the idea is to thread this onto, or thread this through our sticks. We're keeping it natural, we're keeping it bushcraft. It's all about using those natural, those wild resources. The idea, when you do this, you then open it up, what'll happen is, it'll all then pinch together, and it'll pull in tight like that. so that, here we are, there's our tripod. What we need to do now is put in a few cross sections. Some thin ones. Yeah. Some thin ones, so for example, get rid of some of these leaves. Yes, we are gonna once again strip the bark off. Sure, because the, the jerky, well, or, or the smoked meat is going straight on it. Exactly. It? Yeah. So we're gonna make a frame, put one there, one there, one there. Possibly two levels, maybe three, depending on how much meat we've got. So once we've got these three going across, we're then gonna have lengths like this, which we're then gonna rest the meat over. So our meat will be on these cross sections in that smoke. And by covering the whole tripod, or well, the main top half of the tripod in green, something to stop that smoke disappearing. We wanna keep it in and really cure our meat. That's what it's all about. We've, we've still got so much for you guys. We've got, obviously we've got the kebabs on the go. We've got the ribs on the go. They're cooking, those ribs are looking good now, man. They're looking amazing. Dustin's just good, uh, doing some natural bark cordage. We're, obviously you can see the lights fading a bit on the camera, but we're, good. we're, um, we're getting there with this smoking tripod. I don't really know what to call it. A smoking, a smoker, I guess. This is our smoker. It's a bushcraft smoker. And we, Dustin's just using, we're trying to use as much natural cordage as we can. Uh, so we're using some bark here, uh, the inner strands of bark, just to, just to tie up. And actually on the inside of this bark, you can, if you look, you can fray this up with your knife and it acts as, it acts as tinder, it just fluffs up. You probably can't see that at the moment because the camera's out of focus, but once you've fluffed it up, you can see it there on my knife, That all, you can bundle that up and, act, and uh, throw a spark into it from your ferro rod or even a flint and steel but your ferro rod would be better and that can light your fire. We're, we're getting very bushcrafty out here. But it's awesome, it's a lovely woodland. It's nice and peaceful. Yep, birds are singing. Birds are away. Got a mixture of 
coniferous and sort of non-coniferous trees. There's some lovely old oak trees here. Big oak trees. And we've been lucky with the bugs, haven't we? Very lucky, yeah. There's literally no bugs. We're, we're kind of peak summertime now. And there's literally no bugs at the, at the moment, which is awesome. We've got an absolute feast to come up soon. <laughs> we're gonna have an absolute feast. We are. I was just saying, we're gonna wake up tomorrow <laughs> With the meat sweats. Yeah, we will. We will. We won't be able to sleep because we'll of the meat, meat nightmares. <laughs> meat mares. <Yeah. laughs> it's beavers, cubs, scouts. I, I actually did beavers and then uh, sport took over my life. Oh, really? Yeah, so I sadly did not go into cubs, Did which obviously meant I didn't then go into scouts. Yeah. Uh, personally, if I could go back now, I would have 100% gone into the scouting movement just because... I'm into it now, you know, it's, <laughs> but it's just, that's the way life is. I got into sport, sport took over, had that priority. And uh, as a result, it sacrificed my time in it, that where I could have been in the scouts and stuff like that. Yeah. But I guess that's your initial spark. That's for... it. I think it was, you know, being in beavers, cubs and scouts. Yeah. And then going away, what I really enjoyed was going on those scout trips, you know, you in the bell tents with everyone. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, they're like food, a mini expedition. Mini <laughs> expedition. And it just really opened my eyes to to, to the outdoors. So we've built our frame. It's a very crude, crude frame. We're now gonna use these skewers, thread the meat on. Once the meat's all threaded on, we're gonna place them over there like that. And then we're gonna bunch up all of these branches and all the leaves, and we're gonna hang them from the top so it covers and creates a slight umbrella That is looking good. Should we double them up as well? Yeah. One together. You good. Ain't no smoke getting out there. About an hour and a half ago, what we did was we placed, we poured a load of salt all over this hide. What you can see now is puddles of water, of moisture. This is because the salt draws all the moisture out of the hide. It's the first step of our hide tanning.
Are you on? So as you can see guys, we are night time now. We've got the fire going. We've still got the ribs going actually. I forgot about those. <laughs> so we've still got food. We've got the Dutch oven has popped out. So it sounds like we've got uh, we've still got food on the go. We do, we but, do, and we're yet to do chocolate chip cookies oh, in the Dutch oven. Oh, chocolate chip cookies, man. I, I'm having an absolute feast here tonight. But we're, I'm on the old uh, Apple Jacks. Now, I bought this at the Bushcraft Show. I think, I believe, Dustin, you've bought some as well. We, we did. Advertised we did. As, as not something, I think he said it was not, this, not your ordinary cider or something like that was his like slogan. He's a fella in the UK, no website, no online presence, nothing like a, that. It might be a couple of percent over. What I think he said, about. yeah, so it's a 19 and a half percent cider. And he said it's, it's probably over that at some point. So either way, it says best to use within three months of opening. Well, it's been a week, so a couple of weeks. So <laughs> I better not, uh, make the, I better make the most of it. Fudges, traditional, Apple UK. And it's strong stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's nice old bottle though. So yeah, we're on we're on the ciders. We're on, we've had a few beers, yeah. and we're just enjoying time. Look at this backdrop. I mean, look at this camp. We're just enjoying time here. It's such a quiet evening. There's there's no, uh, well, wildlife at all, is there? There's there, I haven't heard many birds. I haven't heard many. Well, they'd be asleep now. But owls, not heard them yet. Do you get owls uh, here? Yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. 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 We'll have to wait a short. You know, wait a little bit. We're still just dark, so it's ten thirty. But it's um, yeah, we're still. Still lots to uh, lots to do, lots to eat for sure, and uh, we'll, I will update you guys in a bit with whatever we are doing. What have we got, Dustin? Right. So while we wake, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. What I've got here, I've got some leftovers from the jerky that we did earlier. So this jerky, which is the venison cut nice and thin, this has been left in the marinade for a couple of hours now. What, maybe four hours? Yeah, I'd say about that, yeah, four. So what I'm gonna do is, the reason why we've left it is because we couldn't, it wasn't quite thick enough or big enough to, to thread onto the skewers. So what I'm now gonna do, is just gonna quickly fry it up and it should be absolutely lovely with that marinade we've left it in. I'm gonna fry it up for a few minutes and then it'll be a little bit of finger food for you. Oh man, look at that. Just those ribs just hang in there still. They look great. They look, everything looks great, man. Looks awesome. Well, they're cooking quick. They are, yeah, they're yeah. really quick. And they're not going to need long at all. I think, give them another, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Yeah, that's hot, isn't it? It's so hot. Man. Very hot. There we go. Oh, here we yeah, go. I see this. Yeah, they should be able to see. Come on. This looks amazing, man. Oh, that marinade. Is it good? Oh, wow. That is oh. just... Wow. That's it. That... that is really good. Oh, it just falls apart. That is amazing, that man. That's lovely. And that was cut against the grain. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, that's that's really really good. That is really, we're not exaggerating. Here, guys. <laughs> this really is it's good. It's like eleven o'clock at night. We're not exaggerating. That is really good food. This is really good. Wow! Can't believe how quick that cooked. Quick. That was so hot. That pan just boom. It's probably on there. Forty seconds maybe. Yeah. Forty seconds. Quick. Flash fry. Oh man. That oh that's amazing. And the marinade really sort of caramelised and put mm. out the flavour. What we'll try and do, guys, I don't know if we can, but what we, what I'll try and do is I'll speak to Dustin tomorrow and see if we can put each kind of recipe, what we've done today, in the, in the video description below so people can see. So I might put um, yep. venison, venison kebab, yep. and this is what we did for the kebab. And then I might the put... The recipe for the jerky. Yeah, the jerky recipe, exactly what Dustin's mm. done for that. So hopefully that way you guys can click in the description below. You'll be able to do that now, by the way. You can click in the show more and you'll be able to get all these recipes of what I've just eaten because I'm not going to lie, this is probably the best meals that I've had ever on an overnighter. You I'm used hurry. to eating... You want to hurry up because I'm going to finish <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm used to eating like a steak, uh, an uncooked steak on a campfire, maybe a, maybe a burnt sausage. That's pretty much my limit. But <laughs> this is good food, guys. Welcome to good food. Oh, amazing.
Amazing. It's so good, man. It is, isn't it? I'm now selectively choosing the bigger, the bigger <laughs> bits of venison <laughs> as well. <laughs> So did you marinate, did you, what did you put on these um, before we hung them up? I put a salt and pepper and paprika marinade. Sure. It also had some chilli in it and it also had some mixed herbs in it. Oh. <laughs> Good. I need to get over there. You need to try one of these. <laughs> They're only thin. There's loads of meat left. You know, there's loads of meat down here on this on the sticker part, but we've got plenty to get through. Yes. Have a go on that. Oh, let's go. Oh. There we go, guys. Oh, that is really good. Mm. That is really good. It's quite spicy, actually. When you yeah, your lips. A, there's, a, <laughs> there's a kick to it. There is a kick to it. God, but that's very good. This, this is caveman food. Caveman, yeah. This is caveman food. Yeah. Nice and chewy. Yeah. And then if you if you peel away that that top layer, you get to this lovely, lovely bit of tender, mm. tender meat. Yeah, just underneath. I can see it. That's Sorry. great stuff. So good. Where's my beer? <laughs> <laughs> right, now the Dutch oven's heated up. Let's take the lid off. We're now gonna drop a few little rocks into the bottom of the Dutch oven. What these rocks will do is when I put my chocolate chip, double chocolate chip, thank you very much. <laughs> gotta, get, gotta be double. Cake mix into the um, bottom of the Dutch oven. The tray the cake mix is, is, is sitting on will actually not burn on the bottom because it's raised off the bottom, which will be red by, hot. By those little rocks have raised it up, yeah. That's it, red hot by the, from those little rocks. Now, pop the lid back on, and then pop a few of these in. Not too close, you don't want it too hot. I've learned from my mistakes, you don't want to burn your chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> so we have heat reflecting onto it, and nothing actually touching it. Oh, wow. She's looking good. That is good. Let's do the old, let's get a knife and quickly, using a knife, we can do the old cake test. We wanna stick the knife in. If the knife comes out clear, without any cake mix on it, then we should be, we should be good. So lift that off, stick her in. Oh, she's clear. There's a little bit on the bottom, but she's fine. See? Yeah, those stones, I see what you mean. Make a good, just raising it up like that a bit. Yep, yeah, it really just keeps the bottom of the, um, of this little tray off the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Five or 10 minutes. Sure. If we can. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna <laughs> be tough. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be tough. And then, uh, then we'll tuck in. Sweet. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that looks incredible. Chocolate chip cookie cooked in the Dutch oven. It does look like a, a chocolate gateau. <laughs> Very nice. Moment of truth, guys. That is the the chocolate. Mmm. Oh. Oh, it's really good. Really good. There's something about cooking over the campfire. Oh. It, just, it just tastes so much better. It does, doesn't it? There's always that smoky smell and taste and it because of the effort you put into cooking it over a fire. But that it is genuinely the smoke, the sort of, uh, the flavors it takes in from that smoke as it well. It really is, and that's, yeah. what, that's what makes it. This is sleeping arrangements for tonight, guys. In a natural shelter with a bit of roe, 
some sheepskin. There's roe, there's uh, fallow, there's seeker uh, as well. Oh, you got the seeker here. Seeker deer, well. yeah. And there's a few um, sheepskins, yeah. Oh, it's so I comfy. Look at this. That's my that's my shelter. I'm sleeping under tonight. Dustin, we got the old uh, lantern up there as well. Double lean to set up, so Dustin's on this one. With sheepskin as well. And you, yeah, you tan those. That's that's awesome. That is thick. It is. It's lovely. It is Fallow. That, that's a roe deer there. Fallow deer there. The sheepskins are great for the hammer. Yeah. Well, they just and just uh, to line your back and just to keep it, that cold away. Yeah, and even on like the 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 logs like this, they just stop that gap between the logs rolling. You rolling in between them, they just soften that right up. But that's really nice, thick, dense shelter. Got some wood on the fire for the rest of the night. We have fire. Boom. Soon we'll have tea. We soon will. <laughs> Morning guys, we both slept pretty well. Dustin's just got the uh, the fire going, we've got the tea on. And uh, yeah, we're probably just gonna enjoy a cup of tea. We've got to pack up our gear as well at some point, but I slept really well on the raised bed. Handy having some sheepskins. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys in a bit once we've had a bit of tea. Don't have much today, but we might have something. Oh, oh we got, oh, got one. Oh, it's a good one actually. The old red signal. Yep, red signal. You can tell that by the red flags he's got under his big pincers. There you go. That'll do. Any more? Any? Oh yeah, there's one more. Got another one. Let's get this one out. See if he'll shake out. Nah. Let's try and... Oh, he wants to come out. You can see him in there. Let's get him out. Come on. Not native to our waters, these. No, these aren't native. These are, these are invasive. And if you ever catch one of these, you're not actually allowed to put it back in the river or the lake or the water source. Because they're invasive, they will eat and destroy the habitat for all the native ones, for the native crayfish. The white one, is it white claw or something? That's the it, white yeah, one. the white claw, which there's not many, not many white clawed crayfish left in the UK. Mm. I think I think some of the rivers and canals and lakes down in Cornwall still have some of the native. Um, but apart from that, in the, the majority of the country in this in this country. The majority of the water sources are all ridden with these. What does Amber think? Oh. Amber! <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop it, Amber. <laughs> right, well, I think they should do for the, for the barbecue. They look good. For the fire. So let's get them. In fact, let's find some natural packaging. What we got? Oh, look, some burdock over here. So let's grab this burdock. No, Amber, it's not for you, it's for me. I'm going to stick it in this burdock. Gonna get this crayfish. 
and then we're going to take it back to camp. Yeah, let's wrap those up. Right. right, so just to show you what I've used here to catch these crayfish, I've made a bit of a fish trap. Um, these are great for catching fish, catching eels, but I use them for catching crayfish, as you've just seen. And it's just made, it took me maybe three hours to make one evening around the fire. It's just made up of a pyramid of hazel uh, sticks. And then I've just woven honeysuckle into the hazel, uh, in between all the hazel sticks. And it's created this lovely, dense, solid, cone-shaped net. So that's the base net for the entrance. Once again, I've just copied what I've done for the entrance. I've just copied what I've done with the, with the main trap to create a smaller but wider funnel. And there's an entrance in there, which means that when this is now secured in there with the wooden pins in place and bait um, set at the bottom of the trap, when that's then in the water, the crayfish will come along and they'll try and work out how to get to that bait. They can smell the bait, whether they're down river or they're in the lake, they can smell, they can smell that cloud of bait. And it's working out, right, how can we get in? Because there's an, a funneled entrance and a hole, they eventually find their way in. By the time you come to check your trap the next day, they'll st probably still be there feeding. So you come to check the trap, and even if they do stop feeding and they want to escape, because it's a funnel shape, it's quite hard for them to actually get out. So when it's in correctly, there's no way that they can really get out apart from in here. So when they do want to try and escape, they'll hit this, this, this funnel and they'll be stuck. So it's, it's a funnel trap made out of natural material, no paracord needed. And what I did was when I pulled it out of the lake, I used, instead of cordage, I used some more honeysuckle. So that was my cordage to just pull it out of the lake, 100% natural. It's, uh, we, we, we're by the old smoker that we made and uh, it's looking good, isn't it? It's looking really good. Got some here. That's really good. That is awesome. So oh. soft, it's cured me. It's mm. not quite dry, leathery. It's that marinade again. Isn't the it, more you we? chew, mm. the more you can get that marinade from last night. Flavour. Yeah, I can just feel it coming out now. And a smokiness to it Look as well. Look at that, guys. Look at this. And there's plenty more. <laughs> so much there under here. Plenty more. That is very cured venison with that unbelievable oh. marinade. And there's about another, <laughs> I don't know, four or five of these. We are sorted. That's some good caveman food there. That's a drive home sorted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Tasty stuff. We're going to finish the rest of these guys. That's really nice. And Dustin's going to have a go uh, at doing a bow drill. So we're going to show you guys a bit of a bow drill because uh, we're slowly packing up at the moment, but we're getting distracted by by smoked cured meats and uh, and cups of tea. So yeah, we will be doing um, a bow drill uh, sort of mini tutorial bow drill in a minute. But um, this is looking awesome. Going to eat some more of this. So we're now going to do a little bit of fire lighting using potassium permanganate and vegetable glycerine. down a little pile of the potassium permanganate. And what I do is I just dip my stick into the glycerine 
just enough to get one or two drops to fall off. Once they've fallen off, just mix it, mix it together slightly. Right, we're going to do a bit of friction fire lighting. We're going to use the bow drill. The hearth I'm using is lime and the spindle is hazel. What I'm going to do is using my axe, I'm going to just make a small hole like that. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my spindle, take my bow, lock that in there, lock my left elbow into my left knee, lean over it. And I'm just going to do this for maybe 10, 15 seconds. We're just to warm it up so it starts smoking and really creates a bit more of an indent in that wood. Once we've got that indent, we're then going to stop drilling using my saw. And I'm going to cut in to take out one eighth of the, of the hole. So now we just tidy up our notch. Just tidy it up a little bit, a few shavings with the knife. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, let's put our tinder bundle down there. So we, we've cut a notch in our half. Yep, that notch is looking good. Let's get a bit of this birch bark. Place that down there. Use my left foot. Apply weight to the half. Spindle. And the bearing block. So I'm just gonna do this for, you know, just maybe 15, 20 seconds again, just to warm it up. Once it warms up, it'll start smoking. Once it's nice and warm, I'll then, with my left hand, I'm gonna apply more pressure, and my right hand, I'm gonna increase the speed at which I'm drilling. As you can see, it's all building up nicely. Let's keep going so we have a nice ember. We can transfer over to our tinder bundle and blow into a flame. And I think I'm gonna stop there. Apply pressure, take my foot off. Now, we've got, we've got a bit of time. Go back, going back to the tinder bundle, it's just making sure in the bundles there, nice compressed in the middle. Yep, so it's ready to transfer over. Really important to, to compress your tinder bundle. Because if we were to just transfer it over into a light tinder bundle, loose, loose tinder bundle, what then happen is we'd probably lose our ember. It would fall through all those fine fibers. Whereas when it's compressed, it will then hold a good solid base. Now we can see we've got a nice smouldering ember right there. So now let's transfer this ember to our tinder bundle. Smouldering nicely. Keep all that powder. So Really good, really good stuff. Gather the ember up. Going back to my tinder bundle, make sure it's nice and compressed. I'm gonna use my thumb to 
compress it, well, I very carefully transfer my ember. So you can see now, if I was to let go of my thumb, all those fibers would become loose. Hey. And there we are, that's fire by friction using the bow drill. Once again, wood wise, one of my favourites, hazel on lime. Right, I'm going to show you another way of fire lighting. This is called the fire roll. I'm going to reach down here, I'm going to grab a bit of ash from yesterday's fire. Remember, this is where we did our jerky last night, where I smoked meat. I'm going to reach down, look, this fire's completely gone out. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a bit of this ash. A bit of a bit of the ash, so I'm looking for a bit of the white and a bit of the the black powdery charcoaly. I I tend to find it's the mix between the two. That's what you really want. That there, a bit of the white uh, ash and then the black charcoal. That is what we need. Let's take a little bit more for luck. With bushcraft fire lighting, sometimes you do need a bit of luck. <laughs> Speaking of luck, just found these two as we were strolling around on this, this morning's hike, hike around the woodland. So two pieces of wood, the reason being is because they're flat surfaces. So now I'm going to fluff up and open up my cotton wool. I'm going to sprinkle some of my ash in there. You don't want to overdo it. Now, really, really tightly roll this up. The tighter and the more compact you do it, the more chance you'll have in getting the ember. Get rid of that dirt. Okay, so once you've rolled it up quite compact, you can see that, that there, it's really becoming dense. Now it's dense, we take another piece of wood, make sure it's clean. Just get rid of some of this dirt that's already on there. Right, I think that'll do. Place it on top, roll it up a that way a few times, and now Would you believe it? That's awesome, man. So that is cotton wool. That could easily come out of your first aid kit. Ash from yesterday's fire. That was cold. That was cold. So the scenario is we've woken up and we've lost our fire steel. We've lost our lighter. We can't do a bow drill, but we've got a first aid kit and yesterday's dead fire. That's awesome. What do you think of that, Mike? That's awesome. That is totally awesome love it well dustin thank you so much buddy dude it's been a pleasure having it's, you it's been brilliant and you guys if you need to check out west country bushcraft what what dustin does his bushcraft courses and not just bushcraft it's all all like we've seen with the deer there's going to be a video coming up after this of him teaching me how to actually butcher a deer you know like a rough guide uh, but it's also all those tips you saw there has barely touched the surface of what Dustin does. So it's just a fraction of what we do. It, it really There's is. There's a whole honestly. world of activities down here. There is so much to see and so much to do. So if you're looking to uh, enhance your bushcraft skills and your wilderness survival skills, there's a link in the description below to Dustin's website. Go and check it out and maybe book onto some of his courses because I'm telling you now, it is incredible. And this camp is awesome as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you've watched all the way through, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification just to make sure that you do get notified via email. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And if you're looking to set up a website, there's more info in the description below. 
Cheers guys, we'll see you soon on the next episode of TA Outdoors.